what has been important in second wave feminist political philosophy. The concept of patriarchy, or rule by fathers, throughout human history sparked much social and textual analysis which was brought to theoretical completion by Carol Pateman in The Sexual Contract, 1988. Pateman argued that when modern social contract theory was constructed by Thomas Hobbes, 1588-1679, and John Locke, 1632-1704, women were left out of the political equation and relegated to private life. Iris Young, 1949-2006, a professor of philosophy at the University of Chicago, addressed the connection between female social roles and political structures in Justice and the Politics of Difference, 1990, and Inclusion and Democracy, 2000. Young also addressed women's disempowered bodily comportment in her 1980 essay Throwing Like a Girl. Included in a book by the same name in 1990. In addition, feminist philosophers have welcomed and discussed the work of University of Michigan Law School professor Catherine McKinnon. What has been important in second-wave feminist political philosophy? The concept of patriarchy, or rule by fathers, throughout human history sparked much social and textual analysis, which was brought to theoretical completion by Carol Pateman in The Sexual Contract, 1988. Pateman argued that when modern social contract theory was constructed by Thomas Hobbes, 1588-1679, and John Locke, 1632-1704, women were left out of the political equation and relegated to private life. Iris Young, 1949-2006, a professor of philosophy at the University of Chicago addressed the connection between female social roles and political structures in Justice and the Politics of Difference, 1990, and Inclusion and Democracy, 2000. Young also addressed women's disempowered bodily comportment in her 1980 essay Throwing Like a Girl, included in a book by the same name in 1990. In addition, feminist philosophers have welcomed and discussed the work of University of Michigan Law School professor Catherine McKinnon. What is Catherine McKinnon's contribution to second wave feminist political philosophy? In the 1970s Catherine McKinnon, 1946, began to argue that sexual harassment is a form of sexual discrimination. Outlawed by the 1964 Civil Rights Act. McKinnon and Andrea Dworkin also developed legal theory to outlaw pornography. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled against sexual harassment in 1986, largely based on McKinnon's work. And the Supreme Court of Canada has partly accepted her arguments against pornography. McKinnon's books include, In Harm's Way, The Pornography Civil Rights Hearings. Edited and introduced with Andrea Dworkin, 
1997, Toward a Feminist Theory of the State, 1989. Pornography and Civil Rights, A New Day for Women's Equality, with Andrea Dworkin, 1988. Organizing Against Pornography, 1988, Feminism Unmodified, Discourses on Life and Law, 1987. And Sexual Harassment of Working Women, A Case of Sex Discrimination, with Thomas I. Emerson, 1979. What is Catherine McKinnon's contribution to second-wave feminist political philosophy? In the 1970s Catherine McKinnon, 1946, began to argue that sexual harassment is a form of sexual discrimination. Outlawed by the 1964 Civil Rights Act. McKinnon and Andrea Dworkin also developed legal theory to outlaw pornography. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled against sexual harassment in 1986, largely based on McKinnon's work. And the Supreme Court of Canada has partly accepted her arguments against pornography. McKinnon's books include, In Harm's Way, the Pornography Civil Rights Hearings. Edited and introduced with Andrea Dworkin, 1997, Toward a Feminist Theory of the State, 1989. Pornography and Civil Rights, A New Day for Women's Equality, with Andrea Dworkin, 1988. Organizing Against Pornography, 1988, Feminism Unmodified, Discourses on Life and Law, 1987 And Sexual Harassment of Working Women, A Case of Sex Discrimination, with Thomas I. Emerson, 1979 Who is Noam Chomsky? Abram Noam Chomsky, 1928, is an American philosopher of linguistics and one of the most widely influential critics of contemporary politics over the 20th century and beyond. Now a professor emeritus of linguistics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Chomsky is recognized as an important founder of cognitive science in linguistics, psychology, and philosophy of mind, as well as computer science. His major publications that are relevant to philosophy of language and mind include Syntactic Structures, 1957, Cartesian Linguistics, 1966, Current Issues in Linguistic Theory, 1964 Aspects of the Theory of Syntax, 1965, The Sound Pattern of English, with Morris Hall, 1968, Language and Mind 1968, Studies on Semantics in Generative Grammar, 1972, The Logical Structure of Linguistic Theory 1975, Reflections on Language, 1975, Essays on Form and Interpretation, 1977. Rules and Representations, 1980, Language and the Study of Mind, 1982, Modular Approaches to the Study of the Mind. 1984, Knowledge of Language, Its Nature, Origin, and Use. 1986 Barrier's Linguistic Inquiry Monograph 13, 1986, 
Language and Thought, 1993, The Minimalist Program. 1998, On Language, 1998, and New Horizons in the Study of Language and Mind, 2000. How did feminist epistemology develop? Nancy Codoro, 1944, showed in The Reproduction of Mothering, 1978. How social roles within the nuclear family are reproduced socially by girls. Identifying with their mothers and boys becoming unlike their mothers. Recognition of the social construction of female gender resulted in. Broad rejection of biological determinism of women's traditional roles. This cleared the way for feminists to seek social causes for the disadvantageous status of women. Carol Gilligan's. 1936, in a different voice, 1982, criticized Lawrence Kohlberg's account of moral development because it left out the relational nature of girls' moral perceptions. In contrast to the more abstract and individualistic nature of boys' moral development, the idea that women had relational identities led to an ethics of care most notably based on Stanford University psychologist Nell Nodding's Caring, 1982, which was foundational for the work of Sandra Lee Bartka in Femininity and Domination. 1990, and Eva Kitte's Love's Labor, Essays on Women, Equality, and Dependence, 1999. Genevieve Lloyd's The Man of Reason, Male and Female in Western Philosophy, 1984 Sparked a view that philosophy itself had been identified with distinctively masculine capabilities of reason to the intellectual as well as literal exclusion of women. These perspectives led to the articulation of feminist epistemology. Stressing connected rather than individual knowers, or people who learn and come to know things. And the role of emotion and action in knowledge. The collection of papers in Linda Alcoff, 1955, and Elizabeth Potter's, 1947. Edited work Feminist Epistemologies, 1993, relates some of this groundbreaking work to traditional epistemology. An additional development of feminist epistemology is feminist philosophy of science. What is Catherine McKinnon's contribution to second-wave feminist political philosophy? In the 1970s Catherine McKinnon, 1946, began to argue that sexual harassment is a form of sexual discrimination. Outlawed by the 1964 Civil Rights Act. McKinnon and Andrea Dworkin also developed legal theory to outlaw pornography. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled against sexual harassment in 1986, largely based on McKinnon's work. And the Supreme Court of Canada has partly accepted her arguments against pornography. McKinnon's books include, In Harm's Way, The Pornography Civil Rights Hearings. Edited and introduced with Andrea Dworkin, 1997, Toward a Feminist Theory of the State, 1989.
Pornography and Civil Rights, A New Day for Women's Equality, with Andrea Dworkin, 1988. Organizing Against Pornography, 1988, Feminism Unmodified, Discourses on Life and Law, 1987. And Sexual Harassment of Working Women, A Case of Sex Discrimination, with Thomas the First Emerson, 1979. What have been the major themes and issues in African American philosophy? Analyses of racism, questions about racial identity, and questions about the reality of race are all important issues in African American philosophy. What is behaviorism? Propounded by psychologists Ivan Pavlov, 1859-1936, and John Broadus, J. B. Watson, 1878-1958, and streamlined by Burhus Frederick, B.F., Skinner, 1904-1990 Behaviorism was the thesis that introspection had no use for a science of mind. Behavior is modified by its consequences in ways that can be described without any recourse to the mind in terms of intentions, beliefs, or prior knowledge. Human psychology was no more than behavior that could observed in the laboratory. Without considering that behavior from the point of view of the subject who was behaving. Learning is conditioning, a series of automatic responses to repetitive rewards and punishment. Watson propounded the theory of behaviorism in his book Behaviorism, 1925. Noam Chomsky's, 1929, review of Skinner's 1959 classic tome Verbal Behavior is taken to have demolished Skinner's behaviorist theory of language learning, and behaviorism more generally. This is important to philosophy in two ways. First it restores the importance of how things seem or are experienced by a human subject. Second, it allows for speculation and analysis of how what is going on in the subject's mind is organized and processed in the brain. What has been important in second wave feminist political philosophy? The concept of patriarchy, or rule by fathers, throughout human history sparked much social and textual analysis, which was brought to theoretical completion by Carol Pateman in The Sexual Contract, 1988. Pateman argued that when modern social contract theory was constructed by Thomas Hobbes, 1588 to 1679, and John Locke, 1632 to 1704, women were left out of the political equation and relegated to private life. Iris Young, 1949 to 2006, a professor of philosophy at the University of Chicago, addressed the connection between female social roles and political structures in Justice and the Politics of Difference, 1990, and Inclusion and Democracy, 2000. 
Young also addressed women's disempowered bodily comportment in her 1980 essay Throwing Like a Girl. Included in a book by the same name in 1990. In addition, feminist philosophers have welcomed and discussed the work of University of Michigan Law School professor Catherine McKinnon. What are the issues addressed by Latino Latina slash Hispanic American philosophy? Identity, immigration, the experience of multinational persons. And the nature of cultural difference are considered. As well, there are unique feminist issues for Latina Americans and questions. Centered on the difference between race, as false biology, and ethnicity, as culture. What is the philosophical issue regarding biological race? In ordinary reality, it seems obvious that most people belong to one or another of a few major races due to biological differences. Actually, human biological sciences have failed to identify any physical essences that distinguish a race. And there are no stable physical traits that all members of any race share. For example, some black people have lighter skin hues than some white people. And overall there is greater variation of so-called racial traits within races than between races. When the human genome was mapped at the turn of the 21st century. Geneticists reporting on the research emphasized that they had found no genes for race. Of course, the physical traits that count as racial are genetically inherited. But there is no difference in principle between those traits and others. Both globally and historically, criteria for racial membership have varied. In colonial times, a person was considered white if most of their great-grandparents were white. By 1900, the one-drop rule was in effect throughout the land. A person was considered black if there were any black ancestors, no matter how far back they were. The one-drop rule erased positive racial identities for Americans with both black and white ancestry they were. And to a large degree still are, considered black, rather than multiracial, mixed race, or biracial. The lack of a biological foundation for black or white racial identity has led some writers to suggest either that racial categories be eliminated or that racial identities be recognized as purely social. On that social basis, there is no rational reason why people with both black and white ancestry should not be recognized as mixed race, instead of automatically assigned to the black category. Others have tried to reconstruct less rigorous biological basis for race. And still others have argued that, within the African American tradition, race has always been understood to involve something more than biology. Who is Ruth Barkin Marcus? Ruth Barkin Marcus, 1921, was educated at Yale, 
received a Guggenheim Fellowship in 1952. And was a founding chair of the philosophy department at the University of Illinois at Chicago. After working as a professor at Northwestern University, she was Halleck Professor of Philosophy at Yale. University from 1973 to 1991. She worked in the formal subjects of quantification theory and modal logic. Sometimes in disagreement with W. V. Oquine, 1908 to 2000. One of her most striking achievements was an early formulation of the new causal theory of reference, made famous by Hilary Putnam, 1926, and Saul Kripke, 1940. The causal theory of reference held that words for things have a history from the first time someone used a specific word to stand for a specific object or idea. For example, we call apples apples because that word was the first at some time. In some specific place, to be used to name the fruit. As proponents of the causal theory of reference put it, apples were baptized apples. Marcus groundbreaking journal articles are collected in Modalities, Philosophical Essays, 1993. She received the American Philosophical Association Quinn Prize for service to the profession in 2007. What is Noam Chomsky's own theory of language? While Chomsky has developed different versions of his theories over the years, often abandoning his own followers of previous versions, most commentators agree that overall themes and trends in his thought amount to the claim that linguistic ability or language in a general syntactic or grammatical sense is hardwired into the human brain as a physical structure enabling a linguistic faculty. Chomsky has posited a universal grammar that limits the group of possible human languages. In philosophical terms, this is a rationalist, rather than an empiricist, approach to language. Thus, in Cartesian Linguistics, 1966, Chomsky clearly stated, in affinity with René Descartes. 1596-1650, that human language is innate and that human beings universally share this capacity. It should be noted, however, that Chomsky is a materialist concerning mental activity. Whereas Descartes believed that the mind was a non-material substance. What are the philosophical issues about racial identity? They come down to the question of whether African Americans should envision themselves and their communities as race-specific or generically American. Traditionally, Strong racial or ethnic identities have developed among members of oppressed groups. Sometimes based on the very things that are used against them by racists. On the other hand, strong racial identities among disadvantaged groups may prevent young people from aspiring to and achieving success in a dominant white society. Beyond these pragmatic concerns is a current consensus that all social and psychological racial identities are socially constructed, rather than biologically determined.
Who are some key feminist philosophers of science? Sandra Harding, 1935, addresses questions of whether women have privileged ways of knowing. In Third World, as well as Euro-American societies, whether the exclusion of women from science can be corrected within science. And whether scientific knowledge is itself misogynistic. What are the three waves of feminism according to feminist philosophers? The first wave began on the eve of the French Revolution with Mary Wollstonecraft's 1759-1797 writings and continued until women in both Great Britain and the United States were granted the right to vote in 1918 and 1920, respectively. After women gained suffrage in the United States, the women's movement seemed to go into a dormant period, perhaps because until the end of World War II progressive thought was concentrated on socialism and communism. However in the middle of the 20th century, the publication of two books began what many view as the second wave. The French existentialist philosopher Simone de Beauvoir's 1908-1986, The Second Sex, 1952, and Betty Friedan's The Feminine Mystique, 1963. Betty Friedan 1921 to 2006 was an American writer and left-wing political journalist and activist. In 1957, at the 15-year reunion of Smith College, an institution for women, she interviewed her classmates who had graduated in 1942. Many had achieved the approved social ambition of a husband, home and children, but they were dissatisfied with their lives and in some instances agonizingly unfulfilled. Ferdan argued, in ways that resonated throughout American society and Europe, that women as human beings needed education and meaningful work, mental stimulation, and fully adult responsibilities. By the 1970s, Further development of Ferdinand's ideas found expression in the third wave. The women's liberation movement was associated with the following achievements. Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibited discrimination in employment on the grounds of gender, as well as race. The U.S. Supreme Court decision of Roe v. Wade in 1973 legitimized the right to abortion based on bodily privacy. These legal innovations combined with the pill, birth control medication, provided a new degree of sexual freedom. Huge increases in women's employment outside the home, and access to higher education. Women entered the professions in unprecedented numbers and the rest is history in the sense that it is now taken for granted by American society that women should have opportunities equal to men's. What is the connection between philosophy of mind and philosophy of language in analytic philosophy? Their development has been intertwined since the end of the behaviorist explanation of language learning. The new field of cognitive science, which arose from Noam Chomsky's 1929 
philosophical treatment of linguistics that disproved behaviorism, shows how philosophy of language is connected to philosophy of mind. When Chomsky proved that language learning required innate linguistic capacities, the whole tabula rasa or blank slate theory of mind came tumbling down. What are the other American philosophies? The term here refers to philosophies that represent groups in the Americas that have been politically subordinate to the groups historically represented by the U.S. government. These philosophies themselves have long histories in their cultures of origin. But their concerns have recently become part of Anglo-American mainstream academic philosophy. As a result, new philosophical subfields emerged toward the end of the 20th century. African American, Native American, and Latin American philosophy. Each of these traditions has developed as a form of cultural criticism. And insofar as its analyses of oppression would not immediately be recognized as such by perpetrators, each is a distinctive critical theory. What is philosophical about feminist philosophy? Unlike women's studies, which is focused on the factual and historical aspects of women's lives, feminist philosophy rethinks much of social philosophy and ethics from the perspective of women and the interests of women. Some feminist philosophers have created new philosophical subject matter. Whereas others have revisited traditional philosophical approaches that were created by male philosophers. For example, political philosophers have often assumed that the basic political unit is a male head of household, thereby neglecting both female workers and the kind of unpaid work performed by women in traditional families. Feminist philosophers seek revisions and expansions of such assumptions so as to include women. What makes the concerns of these historically disadvantaged groups part of philosophy? When philosophers take up these concerns, as many have in recent decades, they become part of the official curriculum of philosophy in higher education. In addition, the issues raised require the methods of both analytic and continental philosophy to resolve. Some of these issues are ethical and others are directly related to political philosophy and public policy. Both of which are now part of the canon of contemporary philosophy. What is Jerry Fodor's modular theory of mind? First of all, Fodor said the mind is largely innate and mental. Development is not formed by experience, but rather set off by experience. Cognition can be described in the same way as the operations of computers, in terms of representations. The mind is modular in that many of its computational processes are independent of others. 
they may send their results to other computational processes. Without having their own processes observed by the other processes. What were the goals of activist second wave feminists? Equality with men in employment, an end to violence against women, full equality of women in public life. Including access to the highest offices of government, and top executive positions in all social institutions. Were all goals of the second wave. Full acceptance of lesbians and non-traditional families remain ongoing political ideals. As do universal health care and child care for working mothers in the United States. The problem of the second shift, or the fact that working women still do disproportionate. Amounts of domestic work and child care in their homes, is another overhanging problem. See in the second shift 1990 by Arlie Russell Hotchild and Anne Machen. Who was Gilbert Ryle and what was his thesis? Gilbert Ryle, 1900-1976, was the Oxford philosophy professor who edited the journal Mind after G. E. Moore, 1873-1958. He is famous for having conclusively taken philosophers to task for talking about the mind as though it were the ghost in the machine. He attacked the lingering Cartesian idea of the mind as a non-physical entity related to the body in ways that could not be explained. Instead, he said statements that were about the mind should be viewed as meaningful. Only if they could be explained in terms of actual behavior or behavioral tendencies. What other continental traditions are new to Western philosophy? Recent decades have seen renewed interest in African, Japanese, Chinese, and Indian philosophies among Euro-American philosophers. Some of this work has been called comparative philosophy because it seeks to relate themes that are well-established and well-developed philosophies in their continents of origin to traditional interests in Western philosophy. Japanese, Chinese, and Indian philosophies admit to the comparative treatment because they have long, well-established textual traditions. However, African philosophy is a less clear case. Not because it fails to treat issues that in the Western tradition would without doubt be considered philosophical. But because much of it has endured through oral traditions. Still, a broad recognition of African culture and its historical civilizations, after the 1960s. Led to the Euro-American perspective of Afrocentrism among some members of the African diaspora. What have been the main themes in philosophical feminism? Philosophical feminists have thus far been very open to theoretical work from other disciplines. 
they have concentrated on theorizing the oppression of women in the history of philosophy. As well as contemporary culture. The result in the United States alone has been a vast body of work with many facets. Although feminism is hardly part of mainstream philosophy in academia. Most philosophy departments now have women members. Examples of influential feminist scholarship include feminist reclamation. Feminist epistemology, feminist political theory, and gender theory. An excellent overview of these subjects is Alison M. Jagger and Marion Young's A Companion to Feminist Philosophy, 2000. Why is materialism important regarding the analytic philosophy of mind? Whether the mind is equated with the physical brain or held to be closely connect to it. Analytic philosophers of mind have been united in a materialist view since Gilbert Ryle, 1900-1976, wrote The Concept of Mind, 1949. Who was Paul Feyerabend? Paul Feyerabend, 1924-1994, who was a friend and colleague of Imro Lakatos. 1922-1974, is famous for his anarchist view of science. He was born in Vienna, Austria, and served in the German army during World War II. Sustaining a bullet to the spine. After the war, he studied at the London School of Economics, with Karl Popper, 1902-1994, as his advisor. During this time he began a dialogue with Lakatos. Taking a stand against Lakatos' rationalist scientific project. But publication of this joint work was curtailed by Lakatos' death. Feyerabend had a lifelong interest in theatre and opera and taught at the University of California at Berkeley after 1958. Feyerabend's main writings include Against Method. Outline of an Anarchistic Theory of Knowledge, 1975, Science in a Free Society, 1978, Realism. Rationalism and Scientific Method, Philosophical Papers, Volume 1, 1981, Problems of Empiricism. Philosophical Papers, Volume 2, 1981, and the recklessly titled Farewell to Reason, 1987. His autobiography is Killing Time, the autobiography of Paul Feyerabend, 1995. Why has Noam Chomsky's theory of language been so influential? Chomsky's principle of a universal grammar is compatible with materialism. It entails that the mind can be scientifically studied like a natural phenomenon. Moreover, the output of speakers can be used as data from which to infer deeper linguistic structures than those evident in spoken language. Insofar as language is an important, if not primary, mental activity. 
the idea of innate physical structures determining language production has implications for understanding other mental functions. Chomsky's work in linguistics has had a strong influence on the philosopher of mind Jerry Fodor, 1935, for example. What is Native American philosophy? Native American tribes and nations have held well-developed worldviews, religions, epistemologies, metaphysics, and social and political views long before Europeans invaded and appropriated their lands. Much of this knowledge was transmitted orally and subject to loss and fragmentation. Following what many indigenous people call the Native American Holocaust, the development of Native American philosophy as a subfield in academic philosophy requires not just reconstruction of past knowledge but some acceptance of the methods of Western philosophy. The problem is that these methods are highly problematic for most indigenous thinkers. Furthermore, after centuries of distorted descriptions of their cultures by anthropologists and government officials, most Native American philosophers have a strong preference for speaking in their own voices, rather than agreeing to let others present their perspectives. There are not very many Native Americans in U.S. university philosophy departments at this time perhaps fewer than 50. Nevertheless, since the 1980s a canon of Native American philosophy has developed, which includes the following sources, The Sacred Hoop by Paula Gunn Allen. 1986, How It Is, the Native American Philosophy of V. F. Cordova by Linda Hogan, by Kathleen Dean Moore. Kurt Peters, and Ted Jehovah, 2007, Cultural Sites of Critical Insight, Philosophy. Aesthetics, and African American and Native American Women's Writings, by Angela L. Cotton and Krista Davis, 2007, American Indian Thought, Philosophical Essays, by Ann Waters, 2003. And Defending Mother Earth, Native American Perspectives on Environmental Justice, by Jace Weaver, 1996. What was Noam Chomsky's argument against behaviorism? Chomsky, 1928, objected on the grounds that the speed with which a child learns a language and demonstrates an ability to form correct new sentences even without hearing grammatically correct speech, implies that this language ability has not been learned. Behaviorism was fundamentally a theory that all human knowledge and behavior, including language use, was learned. Who is Jerry Fodor? Jerry Allen Fodor, 1935, a philosopher of cognitive science at Rutgers University, is perhaps best known for his modular theory of mind and his concept of the language of thought. Fodor's books include, Psychological Explanation, 1968, The Language of Thought, 
1975, Representations Essays on the Foundations of Cognitive Science, 1979, The Modularity of Mind An Essay on Faculty Psychology, 1983, Psychosemantics, The Problem of Meaning in the Philosophy of Mind, 1987 a Theory of Content and Other Essays, 1990, The Elm and the Expert, Mentalace and Its Semantics, 1994. Concepts, Where Cognitive Science Went Wrong, 1998, In Critical Condition, 1998, The Mind Doesn't Work That Way. The Scope and Limits of Computational Psychology, 2000, and Hume Variations, 2003. Fodor also writes about opera for the London Review of Books. His writing style is uniquely witty and peppered with joyful mockery. As well as homespun analogies and references. What is feminist reclamation? In philosophy, as well as other fields, feminist reclamation has been the rediscovery of women thinkers who have been neglected in traditional intellectual history, especially before the 1980s. Some of these women are considered philosophers only if philosophy is broadly construed. But others worked comprehensively on issues central to their field. Influenced their peers, and have only recently been fully recognized for their achievements. A strong example of this category is Ruth Barkin Marcus. What have been the major trends in Latin American philosophy? Many commentators identify four periods in the 500-year history of philosophy in Latin America. Colonial, independentist, positivist, and contemporary. Overall, Latin American philosophers have been actively involved in political and social events in their countries, they have not, until very recently, incorporated indigenous worldviews into their intellectual perspectives. The colonial period, 1550 to 1750, was characterized by interest in medieval scholastic philosophy such as the work of Thomas Aquinas, c. 1225 to 1274 and Francisco Suarez, 1548 to 1617. During this time, Mexico and Peru were important in intellectual life and the influence of Spain dominated the Royal and Pontifical University of Mexico, founded in 1553 was where Alonso de la Vera Cruz 1504-1584, Tomás de Mercado, 1530-1575, and Antonio Rubio, 1548-1615, flourished. Antonio Rubio's Mexican Logic, 1605, was a celebrated textbook on Aristotelian logic throughout Europe. Bartolomé de las Casas, 1474-1566, in defense of the Indians is still widely read. During the independentist philosophical period, 1750-1850, intellectual interest was focused on political issues. Although European rationalism, empiricism and ethics were also taken up. 
The Positivist Period, 1850 to 1910. Embraced European positivism and had local social and political applications. It was assumed by many, after independence, that positivist philosophy backed up by social science, would usher in order and progress. Juan Bautista Alberti, 1812-1884, in his idea, 1842, sought to modify European positivism to the specific circumstances of Latin America. Are all philosophical feminists women? By no means. A number of male philosophers have endeavored to both learn and support feminism and include feminist subjects in their own more traditional work. These men have published such books as Philosophical Explorations in Light of Feminism, 1992. Edited by Larry May and Robert Strykwerda, Men Doing Feminism, 1998, edited by Tom Digby, and Michael A. Sloat's The Ethics of Care and Empathy, 2007. There were women separatist social movements in the 1970s. But this has never been a viable option in academia. The radical feminist philosopher of religion Mary Daly, 1936, who taught at Boston College for 33 years, was forced to retire in 1999 for barring men from some of her classes. Daly was always on thin ice at this Jesuit institution. Especially after the publication of her first book, The Church and the Second Sex, 1968. Daly's work is about how men have appropriated the roles and power of women in religion. Particularly in Catholic ritual. Philosophical feminism has evinced strong support for lesbian feminism on the grounds that lesbians have been oppressed in society and that lesbians may recognize the personhood of women more easily than men. Nevertheless, freedom of sexual preference entails that heterosexuality remains a respected preference. Just as freedom of choice in abortion has not led feminists to invalidate on moral or political grounds, pregnancy and childbirth. On motherhood, for example, Sarah Ruddick's maternal thinking. Toward a politics of peace, 1990, shows how child care develops distinctive ways of thinking. Although childbirth and rearing is not limited to heterosexual women. Much of French feminist writing assumes strong male-female sexual differences. What is feminist philosophy of science? Feminist philosophy of science consists of analyses of scientific methodology and standards for truth. Its focus has been on the ways that the idea of objectivity have excluded knowledge of importance to women. What are some of the current issues in Native American philosophy?
the concerns address politics, ecology, religion, and feminism. The Native American claims are both straightforward and difficult to solve. Political activist and former ethnic studies professor at the University of Colorado at Boulder. Ward Churchill, has argued that progressive movements within mainstream American society do not address Native American ideals because those progressive movements are dedicated to getting more of the prizes of technology and capitalism. Traditional Native Americans, by contrast, seek to withdraw from the dominant system and into self-sufficient traditional communities. To some extent, the current political issues of Native Americans concern ecology and environmentalism. On the one hand, Native Americans may refuse to be used as symbols of ecological virtue. Even though ideals of self-sufficiency on tribal lands do rely on sustainable ecological practices. It is a significant irony that some Native American communities have been able to use profits from their casinos to purchase those ancestral lands that the U.S. promised them in unfulfilled treaties. Viola Cordova, 1937-2002 a university professor and the first Native American to earn a doctorate in philosophy. She was also part Hispanic, argued that the history of Western philosophy has an overwhelming Christian bias and influence in ways that are incomprehensible to thinkers in Native cultures. And Waters, another Native American philosopher, as well as an attorney who teaches at California State University at Bakersfield. Has challenged the myth of European discovery of the Americas. Referring to oral traditions claiming that Native Americans have always inhabited the Americas. Native American women writers such as Paula Gunn Allen have traced matriarchal patterns in indigenous political history which were dislodged by European settlers who refused to negotiate with female leaders. This suggests very different feminist concerns among Native American women compared to Western feminists. Recovering political power instead of attaining it. What was Paul Fire Bent's view of science? He did not think it was possible to construct a philosophy of science that set out invariable rules for scientific progress. Instead, he argued that the most important scientific revolutions proceeded in violation of standing accepted methodological rules. He believed, for example, that the consistency criterion, which posits that new theories not contradict older ones, is not a rational rule but an aesthetic one, insofar as old theories have been falsified. Feyerabend also argued against Karl Popper's 1902-1994 Idea of falsification on the grounds that interesting theories are not constructed in accordance with all relevant facts. One example of this was how the Renaissance astronomer Galileo Galilei, 1564-1642 and his followers disregarded some of their telescopic observations during the construction of their optical theory. Feyerabend claimed that Lakato's notion of a research program was a form of his own anarchism in disguise. He dedicated against method. 
Outline of an Anarchistic Theory of Knowledge, 1975, to Lakatos as his fellow anarchist. What were the main themes and claims in classic African-American literature? Until the Emancipation Proclamation, 1862, the main issue was the abolition of black slavery. From the end of the Civil War until the Civil Rights Movement of the late 1950s that resulted in legislation against discrimination in 1964, the issue was discrimination against blacks and their social and legal exclusion from opportunities in employment, education on all levels, housing, adequate medical care, and fairness in the criminal justice system. At the same time, support for and construction of positive identities for African Americans was a central concern. What is Latin American philosophy? Latin American philosophy is either or both the thought of philosophers who reside in Latin American countries or the newer work of Latino Latina slash Hispanic American philosophers. Like African American and Native American philosophy, it is a subfield to the academic discipline that formed after 1930, although it was not duly recognized until after 1980. Contemporary Considerations of Philosophy in Latin America Written by philosophers who also reflect on the Latino Latina slash Hispanic American Experience include the following books, Linda Alcoff and Eduardo Mendieta. Thinking from the Underside of History, Enrique de Sell's Philosophy of Liberation, 2000, Jorge J. E. Gracia, Maria Camurathy, Editors. Philosophy and Literature in Latin America, 1989, Jorge J. E. Gracia and Elizabeth Millen Zabert. Editors, Latin American Philosophy for the 21st Century, The Human Condition, Values and the Search for Identity, 1989, Eduardo Mendieta, Global Fragments, Critical Theory, Latin America, and Globalizations. 2007, Susanna Nuxitelli, Latin American Thought, Philosophical Problems and Arguments, 2002. And Ophelia Schutt, Cultural Identity and Social Liberation in Latin American Thought, 1993. What is Catherine McKinnon's argument against pornography? According to McKinnon, pornography not only exploits and objectifies those women who are its subjects, but it also expresses and supports the overall oppression of women in society. The subordinate status of women in pornography, as well as the violence against women depicted in so many of its forms, is part of an unjust sex gender system. What is Catherine McKinnon's argument against pornography? According to McKinnon, 
pornography not only exploits and objectifies those women who are its subjects, but it also expresses and supports the overall oppression of women in society. The subordinate status of women in pornography as well as the violence against women depicted in so many of its forms, is part of an unjust sex gender system. How have second wave feminists addressed gender? They have criticized the social norm of compulsive heterosexuality. On the grounds that the human sex gender system is a system of power that benefits men at the expense of women. Some of this work has consisted of the deconstruction of gender as natural and a valorization of love between women. Judith Butler the professor of rhetoric and comparative literature at the University of California at Berkeley, has challenged heteronormativity in Antigone's claim, kinship between life and death. 2000, and Gender Trouble, Feminism and the Subversion of Identity, 1999. Butler is famous for her deconstruction of gender into performances of gender. Sarah Lucia Hoagland, in Lesbian Ethics, Toward a New Value, 1988, and Marilyn Fry in The Politics of Reality. Essays in Feminist Theory, 1983, developed foundational views of this perspective. How have second wave feminists addressed gender? They have criticized the social norm of compulsive heterosexuality. On the grounds that the human sex gender system is a system of power that benefits men at the expense of women. Some of this work has consisted of the deconstruction of gender as natural and a valorization of love between women. Judith Butler, the professor of rhetoric and comparative literature at the University of California at Berkeley, has challenged heteronormativity in Antigone's claim, kinship between life and death. 2000, and Gender Trouble, Feminism and the Subversion of Identity, 1999. Butler is famous for her deconstruction of gender into performances of gender. Sarah Lucia Hoagland, in Lesbian Ethics, Toward a New Value, 1988, and Marilyn Fry in The Politics of Reality. Essays in Feminist Theory, 1983, developed foundational views of this perspective. What is French feminism? French feminism is a school of thought named by feminists outside France to refer to work mainly proffered by Luce Iragoray. 1932, Helen Sixus, 1937, and Julia Kristeva, 1941. But none of these three is originally from France. And from time to time each has denied being a feminist. What Ira Gary, Sixus, and Chris Tava all share is that their work is based on considerations of philosophical and psychoanalytic texts. They all assume that to improve the situation of women, 
fundamental psychological structures need to be revised. That is, they are working within the tradition of structuralism. By comparison, there is another group of French feminists whose work is more sociological and activist than theoretical. Known as French materialist feminists, they address the situation of women by attempting to change society through political activism and work in the social sciences. Key figures are, Simon de Beauvoir, 1908-1986, Christine Delphi, 1941, Monique Wittig, 1935-2003, and Colette Guillaumin, 1934. Some of their theoretical work, which has been especially influential in the Communist Revolutionary League, describes the ways in which the free labor of women in the family supports capitalism. What is French feminism? French feminism is a school of thought named by feminists outside France to refer to work mainly proffered by Luce Irigaray. 1932, Helen Sixus, 1937, and Julia Kristeva, 1941. But none of these three is originally from France. And from time to time each has denied being a feminist. What Ira Gary, Sixus, and Chris Tava all share is that their work is based on considerations of philosophical and psychoanalytic texts. They all assume that to improve the situation of women, fundamental psychological structures need to be revised. That is, they are working within the tradition of structuralism. By comparison, there is another group of French feminists whose work is more sociological and activist than theoretical. Known as French materialist feminists, they address the situation of women by attempting to change society through political activism and work in the social sciences. Key figures are Simon de Beauvoir, 1908-1986, Christine Delphi, 1941, Monique Wittig, 1935-2003, and Colette Guillaumin, 1934. Some of their theoretical work, which has been especially influential in the Communist Revolutionary League, Describes the ways in which the free labor of women in the family supports capitalism. Who is Julia Kristeva? Since arriving in France in 1966 from Bulgaria, Julia Kristeva, 1941, has achieved international recognition for her writings about women in the psychoanalytic tradition. Her work is considered multidisciplinary, encompassing art criticism, philosophy, and cultural critique. Kristeva's primary theoretical contribution has been a distinction between the symbolic aspects of language and what she calls the semiotic. A psychic level of meaning based on a child's relationship to its mother. Primary human desires are attached to the semiotic, which is based on the biological rhythms of the maternal body. Although the semiotic eludes symbolic translation,
Who is Julia Kristeva? Since arriving in France in 1966 from Bulgaria, Julia Kristeva, 1941, has achieved international recognition for her writings about women in the psychoanalytic tradition. Her work is considered multidisciplinary, encompassing art criticism, philosophy, and cultural critique. Kristeva's primary theoretical contribution has been a distinction between the symbolic aspects of language and what she calls the semiotic. A psychic level of meaning based on a child's relationship to its mother. Primary human desires are attached to the semiotic, which is based on the biological rhythms of the maternal body. Although the semiotic eludes symbolic translation, What is Julia Kristeva's idea of the object and the nature of women? Kristeva has emphasized the rejection of mothers by both male and female. Children due to male-dominated cultural patterns that render the mother herself abject. Which is to say, totally other disgusting, and monstrous. Chris Tava thinks that the solution to this problem requires a rediscovery and healing of narcissism in women's psyches and an acceptance of adult love between women. However, Chris Tava rejects the label woman as a universal term, and has refused to define women. She apparently believes that every woman is fundamentally different in how she is a woman or what being a woman means. As she wrote, it is there, in the analysis of her difficult relation to her mother and to her own difference from everybody else. Men and women, that a woman encounters the enigma of the feminine. I favor an understanding of femininity that would have as many feminines as there are women. Kristeva's main theoretical writings are, about Chinese women, 1977, Desire in Language. A semiotic approach to literature and art, 1980, Powers of Horror, an essay on abjection. 1982. Revolution in Poetic Language, 1984, and New Maladies of the Soul, 1995. What is Julia Kristeva's idea of the object and the nature of women? Chris Tava has emphasized the rejection of mothers by both male and female. Children due to male-dominated cultural patterns that render the mother herself abject. Which is to say, totally other, disgusting, and monstrous. Chris Tava thinks that the solution to this problem requires a rediscovery and healing of narcissism in women's psyches and an acceptance of adult love between women. However, Chris Tava rejects the label woman as a universal term, and has refused to define women. She apparently believes that every woman is fundamentally different in how she is a woman or what being a woman means. As she wrote, it is there, in the analysis of her difficult relation to her mother and to her own difference from everybody else. Men and women, that a woman encounters the enigma of the feminine. 
I favor an understanding of femininity that would have as many feminines as there are women. Kristeva's main theoretical writings are, about Chinese women, 1977, Desire in Language. A Semiotic Approach to Literature and Art, 1980, Powers of Horror, An Essay on Abjection. 1982, Revolution in Poetic Language, 1984, and New Maladies of the Soul, 1995. Who is Lucira Gray? Luce Ira Gray, 1932, was born in Belgium and attended Jacques Lacan psychoanalytic seminars in the 1960s. She is famous for having written, Sexual difference is probably the issue in our time which could be our salvation if we thought it through, and one must assume the feminine role deliberately. Which means already to convert a form of subordination into an affirmation, and thus to thwart it. Ira Gray's main writings include An Ethics of Sexual Difference, 1982, and J.E. 2. News, Toward a Culture of Difference, 1990. Who is Lucira Gray? Lucira Gray, 1932, was born in Belgium and attended Jacques Lacan psychoanalytic seminars in the 1960s. She is famous for having written, Sexual difference is probably the issue in our time which could be our salvation if we thought it through, and one must assume the feminine role deliberately. Which means already to convert a form of subordination into an affirmation, and thus to thwart it. Ira Gray's main writings include An Ethics of Sexual Difference, 1982, and J.E. 2. News, Toward a Culture of Difference, 1990.